So finally made it over to Halt 3.1 where it's all about mobility and actually this is for the very first time in the history of the International Auto Show here in Frankfurt the topic. It's uh, mobility connects and um, it can't get any better. I talked to someone who is really into the connecting business, um, connecting industry, connecting things, connecting people. And therefore, I'm going to talk to um, Eric Brenners. He's the director of M2M Communication, therefore also the director for everything automotive at Vodafone. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah. So, um, I mean, for the very first time that you can show off here at the biggest auto show and car show in the world, because at the end of the day, M2M communication, the car of the future, the smart car of the future, needs a proper network and you guys are working on this. I agree. Um, I think this year it's obvious when you walk around the fair here in Frankfurt, uh, the connected car and for the future the autonomous car is really the big theme and the mobile networks are absolutely key to this and uh, we as Vodafone have the biggest mobile networks globally so I think we're right in the center of the action this year in the automotive industry. Even in this Halt 3.1, you know what, I have to admit that this is my very first IAA because, I mean, we, we have this different approach of coming from mobile technology. Um, this Halt 3.1 looks like an amazing kind of mixture in between some startups that we have over here. We have telecommunications uh, providers and, of course, the car industry. So the big merger is happening now. Yes, absolutely. I think the connected car is not any longer the future. It's the present, but it's the beginning of the present because uh, in Europe at the moment uh, of all the new cars only about 20% of the cars are connected mm -hmm. but in three years I am sure it will be more than 80% and that's why we're working very closely with um, all car manufacturers in expanding the products which they have so that it becomes even more attractive for consumers to buy a connected car. When we talk about the connected car, the smart car of the future, future of mobility, we also have to talk about smart cities and of course the Internet of Things just to kind of combine all the buzzwords we're talking about in these days. But this is about infrastructure, this is about networks and we have 4G established in the markets for quite a while now. Yeah. Um, but there is something else coming and that is 5G. Can you tell us a little bit about the development of 5G and why it's so important for you guys? Yep. You're absolutely right. Um, 4G is established also in the automotive industry. We have many products out there jointly with car manufacturers which use 4G in order to provide an internet hotspot in the car, download music videos, also provide services like emergency call, remote car diagnostics. And that will grow a lot over the next years because today only a few cars are connected. So the market is moving into the right direction in that field. But the big new thing is actually the autonomous driving and autonomous driving gives us completely new challenges which we don't have today. For example, when there's an accident, we want in the future the car which has the accident to notify all the cars which come directly after the accident so that they brake automatically. For this you need a very short latency time, meaning the time that the message needs in order to get from one car to another one. Networks today have a latency time of about 45 milliseconds, which is not enough for this specific case. And the new networks, we call them the 5G networks, will have one millisecond latency time, meaning that you can actually get this, um, uh, get this out in the market and the cars will break automatically. And that's why we're working today already together with the automotive industry on the 5G networks and are already testing those. It's going to be interesting, the mobile gaming community is going to love you guys for one milliseconds of latency, right? It's also, it's also going to open a, a, a different market. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about um, the, the roadmap until we're getting 5G into the markets? Is, is, is there, like, the whole industry is talking about 2020 when it comes to the autonomous car. Yeah. Um, is this kind of matching your roadmap? Yep, that's right. So we plan to have it commercially available in Germany, for example, in the year 2020. We're already testing networks now. We're working with universities like the University of Dresden um, on, on this and we're already rolling out um, test networks uh, as well. But commercially available, we expect the year 2020. So um, I'm pretty sure that you're talking to all the car manufacturers out there. 
Um, right now we're still in a situation where we have to use sims, right? And we were talking a lot about virtual sims of the future. So is this going to be an option that maybe with 5G we're going to see a change that each and every car is just having a, a module in there that can connect to your network and also connect to your network internationally, which is very, very important, right? Roaming is going to be a factor. Yep. Well, I mean, the SIM cards today, which are in cars, are not classic SIM cards like the plastic SIM card which you plug yeah. in there. They are really a, a, a very small component which you solder onto the communication module, which has security features built in, which has automotive specification for a higher temperature range, for example, and so on. So, the, so these are already specialized SIM cards for the automotive industry. We do not expect the SIM card to ever go away because it's a critical security component of our network. You need it for identification. However, of course, the technology will move forward in the sense that you have one SIM card which works everywhere in the world. Actually, we have that today already. Yeah, That's yeah. what we did, um, the so-called global SIM, which is soldered inside. So I think that technology is already there. That won't be the focus for the 5G networks. Um, the real innovation on 5G networks will actually be in the network. Latency time, speed that it needs to transmit the data and so on. Talking about data, the bandwidth of the 5G networks will really drastically improve, right? And, um, and the autonomous car of the future also needs to transmit and receive a lot of data. Isn't this going to be quite a challenge for uh, building up a new infrastructure? Well, I think when we look at the, at the past, um, now already, we use so much more data than we would have thought about five years ago. And that's just the way that this industry is going. You're absolutely right. The amount of data will be huge. Because if a car actually updates all the software systems in the car remotely over the air, we're talking about gigabytes, and that is comparable to a movie today. Also, when you download, continuously download new map information, which the car will need in order to drive autonomously, it's also very huge um, data volumes. However, um, I'm not worried about that at all. That's exactly the reason why we're always investing into our existing networks and why we're building these new networks. In addition to that, in the car industry, certain things like software upgrades for the car over the air can also happen at night when the network is not congested anyway. So um, we're taking all this into account and I'm very optimistic that, um, that we will be able to support all the requirements in the future as well.